Break one nine, this is Fence Post Road on westbound on Highway 30. Need a radio check. Boys and girls, today we're gonna to be whisking you away to a magical land that we've had a multiple year love affair with. We've made many red arrows, many frothy lung blood blood trails there in high definition HD. So if you're not down with this sort of thing, or you're some kind of PETA freak, in the immortal words of Davy Crockett, y'all can go to hell. I'm going to Texas. <laughs> in Texas, there are over 28,000 registered machine guns. Sam Houston, arguably the most famous Texan, was from the Commonwealth of Virginia. John Wayne and Chuck Norris are honorary Texas Rangers. I thought Chuck Norris was a real Texas Ranger. Wasn't that a documentary about his life, Walker, Texas Ranger? No. You keep your wheels spinning in the beavers grinning and I'm gone. There's a lot of cool things we can thank Texas for, like rodeos, the highest white-tailed deer population in the country, Ted Nugent, the largest wool production in the world. Shouldn't that be the DNC? Get it? Sheep. Meh. <laughs> I'm mean as gravel, I'm poor as dirt. You know, I'm excited to be in Lampasas, Texas. We are linking up with our new friends, Braxton and Jessica Byers of Follow His and Her Arrow. And we're also seeing our old buddy Keith from Afflicted Broadheads. We're gonna all be in camp together. Well, all but Jessica, she's gotta fly out to do whatever cool, awesome huntresses do. But that's fine with me because there's plenty of stuff to kill. I mean, we're there to kill hogs, primarily. At least that's the hunt we booked, but we have a deer tag, or several actually, and there's free range all dad all over these canyons down here in Land Passes, so I'm excited. We're actually staying in Braxton and Jessica's house, which is a really nice little ranch house, and that night we got settled in, we got unpacked, and decided to shoot the Hoyts a little bit just to make sure they made the trip. One thing I was really excited about this week was Keith from Afflictor Broadheads and I have gotten together and we're designing a Red Arrow Broadhead. And not only one Red Arrow Broadhead, but two Red Arrow Broadheads. We're doing an expandable and a fixed blade and he brought the first prototypes. I'd never even seen them before. Dude, I'll just keep reusing them. But that looks like something made to drill to the center of the earth or something, you know? These were the first prototypes, first opportunity I've ever got to shoot anything with our new Red Arrow Broadheads and I was super excited for the first animal to walk out. It's four o'clock already. I've said it before and I'll say it again. These things aren't going to kill themselves, so I guess we better get up. Our setups are going to be to hunt hogs, but we are going after anything we see. If we see a deer that is a good buck that comes in or a call buck or really any kind of buck, you know me, we're going to shoot it. And uh, we're just there just to stack meat in the meat locker, son. That's what we're there for. First morning down here. We're in Land Passes, Texas. So, all oh, right behind us. So the bar on this hunt has been set pretty low, but in a good way. Anything from a 50 pound hog or any hog that comes by, I'm whacking it, man. Hogs right here. Bigger hogs coming right here. So that first morning we saw some hogs, couldn't get a shot at them, they started to move off. When I'm in Texas or any place that there are spot and stalk hogs, buddy, I have a hard time sitting in a ground blind or even a tree stand. It's, uh, it's a difficult thing for me to do. I get antsy. And uh, so when we saw these hogs move off, I was like, man, let's get out. They gone. Dang, man. Our wind is perfect blowing right this way. For I guess just a split second, it swirled and went right to those hogs. They were coming right in. Get back in the blind for a while. That that, mm, that really pisses me off. Look at a buck. Got out trying to kill these hogs. <laughs> Our luck for the last part of the season remains the same. Really, really bad. We circle around outside the blind and I'm like, this deer's trying to come in to give me a broadside shot. If I'd have just set my butt down in the blind, we'd have been one deer down already and we ain't even got here good yet. Mm -hmm. 
So we go back to camp, we shoot our bows a little more, we make some lunch. We're doing the first test shot on the new Red Arrow fixed blade. One, we're gonna test its accuracy. And two, we're gonna probably blow through this target like it's a wet paper bag. We got this old generic target out there. And it's right where my pin was, too. That is perfect. Like, why do they fly so good? I don't know. Why do they penetrate so good? I don't know, they just do. I almost shot clean through it anyway. And that's not an old target, and they've ratchet strapped the target to tighten it, and it still shot all the way up to the flushing. That thing is a tank, man. For you fixed blade guys, that thing's cutting a chunk out of there. Oh yeah, they fly perfect. You're not gonna find a mechanical that flies any better than that fixed blade right there. The only reason it didn't blow all the way through this target is because I had this target behind it to stop it. It would have just zipped through that like it wasn't even there if this hadn't have stopped it. Suckers zipped right through them, field point accurate. Keith tested them with his crossbow shooting like crazy, I don't know what he said, 400, almost 400 feet per second out to 50 yards and grouped him in there with his field points. And then I just shot it and it just hit right dead center 10 ring. Red arrow edition is what these are. They got the flared out a little bit wider blade on them. And we make a plan for that evening and it's another hog hunt basically. Kind of a deer slash hog hunt because they're all just, there's stuff everywhere. And this ranch is so new that nobody really knows. I mean, Braxton has scouted it some, but we're just, we're just excited, man. This is like going on to untouched territory. You know, it's just cedar brush and everything around us, and we got a couple little roads that come together right at this spot, and we put out some antler king. And dude, we're just hoping for some hogs to come in. If a buck comes in, great. If a doe comes in, I'll probably shoot her too. Let me give you a breakdown of our little setup we got here. Y'all know I'm not a real big fan of a ground blind, but one of these days I'm gonna invent the best ground blind in the world. I just hadn't figured out how yet. I digress. Currently, we're sitting in a ground blind because it's the only place to hunt at this spot we've got some stuff spread out there we've got a little sweet apple intensity out there they might be popping out of this canyon there's all dad in the canyon there's deer there's hogs there's everything so i'm gonna have to do some acrobatics to shoot out of this window because i'm too short to like too low down to shoot out of this window we'll see if we can make a whole chinese fire drill work in this ground blind Has come to me with your weakness, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Rest in the comfort of my presence, remembering that nothing is impossible with me. Pry your mind away from problems so you can focus your attention on me. Recall that I am able to do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. Instead of trying to direct me to attune yourself to what I am already doing, guess the main point of that whole thing is you're not in control so relax and enjoy it God's got it well the yearling kind of walks off and then we look up and all I see are these massive horns kind of looking up the road and it took me a minute because I'd never seen an all dad on the hoof and I was like that's an all dad all I see are these massive horns kind of looking up the road. And it took me a minute, because I'd never seen an all-dad on the hoof, and I was like, that's an all-dad. So when these four all-dad come bebopping down the road, I was kind of in disbelief for a second there. And they're coming right into range, man. These things are about to be 35 yards.
all that don't really react like the other animals I've seen. They they kind of just walk off. It's weird. They're really tough animals. I mean, this thing's bleeding to death, and it just kind of walks about 40 yards and then just lays down dead. I got to be honest with y'all. I was so excited to shoot an all dad. I didn't look and see which one was the biggest to try to wait. The first one that got broadside, I released an arrow. Be careful, there's another all dad coming in. All dad are not native species, so there is no bag limit. And these other all dad, the other three kind of scattered for a minute, looked at that other all dad and thought, hmm, where's Charlie going? So I just knocked another arrow, and here comes the biggest one of the bunch. This big one was like bullying the other two, knocking them around, hitting them, and, and that's the one I should have waited on, but now it's gonna look like, it's gonna work out perfect, because now I've got two all dad opportunities. The arrow finds its mark, and that red arrow, a flicker broadhead, just, annihilates this all dad. He takes it like a champ though. I'm telling you these things are tough. It's unbelievable to watch him react. And then he just walks a little bit. And he starts kind of cocking his horns to the side and then he fell over. We counted it off and it was eight steps from where this arrow hit him to where he passed away. It was unbelievable. All dad in the hill country, baby. All dad down, baby. Man, I couldn't wait. I had got my first two all dad down and Keith and Braxton were on the way to get us. I couldn't wait to show them. We hadn't even gone to look for them yet. Yeah, boys. <laughs> Let's hear it. What's up, gentlemen? What's up, man? How are y'all? What'd you see? What, the fixed blade ink? No, oh, yeah. I, I, uh, we may have one more than, more than one blood trail here, oh, boys. Wait. So here, here's the deal. <laughs> Now, uh, I've always been told my whole life to ask for, uh, forgiveness instead of permission. I don't, you know, whatever whatever needs to happen can happen, but <clears throat> we had a bunch of all dad come in. Comes into 35, and I blistered it with the fixed blade. And then granddaddy of all granddaddy, all dads, the biggest one I've ever seen walked in, and um, he got to 35 yards, and I smoked him with the freaking expandable. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, man. <laughs> Dude, but so, Neither one of them made it out of this broom straw before they bedded down. Just a, look, <laughs> look right there. <laughs> look at that, boys. I don't know. I don't know a thing about these things, Braxton, but I do know my heart was pounding out of my chest when I. I don't know what to do with my bow out here. Look at that. Ten yards. Ten yards. Yeah. Ten yards. Neither one of them made it over 20 yards. I mean, that one might have made it 25 yards, and that was a little bit of a low shot on my part with the fixed blade. But this K2 one right here, that looks like he fell down the stairs with a chainsaw. So is this a, is this a female or a male? I don't even know. <laughs> Let's see. There's, there's a tell, telltale sign. See, yeah. I told you. What do you think about that, dude? Thank I, you, sir. Appreciate it. I don't know it. how many all dad the afflicted have killed. I know it's three now. Dude, I, I maybe have the record for, that's 10 yards, that's dude. 10 yards, I mean, how does, it, how does an animal die that quick? That's a good spike. You know, I didn't even know what an all dad was until I came on this trip. I mean, I thought it was what happened when your father eased one out during a road trip and rolled all the windows up and you just went, oh, dad. We recovered the second all dad first and uh, it looks like I hit, uh, maybe just a touch low, but I think I cut his heart. Let's go check him out. Out. Came out, the exit came out just a, a grunt low, but not too bad. My man Keith right here from Afflictor. It worked, put, right? Put this hunt together. Well, you're the first one to draw blood. Draw blood with that, with that. Uh, and on the first day, dead. on the first day too, man. I was pumped, man. These all dad were cool. These were a fun animal, and I didn't really get the full all dad experience, you know, the hard charging, getting up there in the canyons, really getting after them. I want to do that next time, but we just got lucky, boys. I mean, they just fell right in our laps. It was awesome. Ready, one swing. All right, get a bungee cord and we're set to go. All dead number two. 
Everybody knows about my all dads. So the next day we get up and we take our all dad up on the mountaintop and take some pictures with him. After we got some pictures of the all dad, we were riding around and we spot this group of hogs. And this looks like a good opportunity to get on a little spot and stalk. We spotted some hogs out there. Pretty far off, we're gonna have to book, book it to get up in front of them. Try to take my rifle and my bow. These hogs were several hundred yards away, but that was gonna give us the advantage that we had time. They were heading to cover and they were taking their time feeding through the pasture. So we get around in the thick where they're heading to and we're just gonna kinda move around as we get in there. We get to this one little trail, it looks pretty good. It looks like the hogs use it quite a bit. And then we hear all this grunting and moving and we know that whole pack of hogs is just coming right to us. Big one right there, ready? Ready. He walked in my shot. <laughs> well, we ran up on some hogs, that's for sure. I shot a hog, the biggest one of the bunch, and hit it a little bit back, but it was when it when it was going, it was quartering a little bit. So I hope I got up in there and got something good. But we're gonna get on, see if we can get on blood. She ran out there. A whole bunch of blood for hitting her that far back. Blood, blood. Oh yeah. An old foul hog. That was cool, man. Spotting stalk on a bunch of hogs. We spotted a bunch of hogs from up there where we parked the general. We haven't been even out here but just a couple minutes and uh Got a hog down, we still got some daylight left, so we're gonna get after him, man. I hope Pete's killing something. He's been an undercover tree hugger, Peter Freak, this week. He ain't been pulling the trigger. The man makes a mean broadhead, but we gotta get him fired up a little bit. <laughs> well, I'd done it, man. We got our first hog in Texas spot and stalk with the Hoyt bow. I was excited, and the good news is this was the first part of the week. We still had many other days that we were gonna get to hunt down here in Land Passes. And the coolest part about it is when we were loading up this hog in the general, Keith texted me and said he had a giant all dad coming right to his blind. Keith is just hoping that he's gonna get him close enough to where he can get a broadside shot this sucker. I mean, this is a tank if you look at him too. Now to put this into perspective for a whitetail hunter, this all dad that's coming in is the equivalent to like a 200 inch deer or bigger. I hate to leave y'all hanging like that, but we just had too much footage to cram it all into one show. In fact, we actually had too much footage to cram it into two shows. Next week on Red Arrow Texas Part Two. We just shot a really big all dad. I like Lucky Charms by the way. Man, that's how have jack you up right there. Little AR-15 upside the snout. Now, he put a hurting on you right there, boy. It's gonna skull mount him, right? Oh, <laughs> we're gonna full body mount him, <laughs> put him on a rock. We love making red arrows with Luminox and reflectors. The body count is now up to six, I believe, in this trip. We killed some pretty giant critters. So that's coming up next week on Red Arrow. Thank y'all for y'all's support, man. Don't forget to stop by the online store and represent with some Red Arrow apparel. Tell everybody that you don't mind shooting stuff and you're unapologetic about it. And you like turning arrows red. We really appreciate y'all and we'll see y'all next week.